Welcome to another episode of Altitude Advantage. I am your host and team reporter, Elisa Hernandez, and across from me is DenverBroncos.com lead writer, Eric Dalala. We're here after, <laughs> just so you guys know, he did a little dance. Um, but we are here after the Broncos fell to the Chargers, a late rally for this team. They unfortunately come up short, 23-16. to 16. We talked about it a little bit after the game yesterday, but as always on Monday, 24 hours later, we love to hear your thoughts after you've digested the game and you've kind of seen it from a different, you know, perspective. I've got two things that stood out to me. And one is kind of focused on the game, Elisa, and one is big picture, right? And I think both are important. Uh, one, offensively, the, the team did have some opportunities. I know it was a struggle through the first three quarters. The Broncos did not score until the fourth. Um, I know there's been some stuff made of like is it empty calories is it is it empty yards yeah. in the fourth quarter uh bonick still made some impressive throws i thought some impressive plays with his feet uh, it was the second most yards um completions tied for the second most passing touchdown of any player in the fourth quarter this season so that speaks to to what he did and listen at this point i think with a young quarterback you want to see growth and development you want to see him take advantage of opportunities yeah. certainly to find success in the fourth quarter even if they're playing a different coverage is better than the alternative right yeah um but i think throughout the game you could just see opportunities that were missed and um whether it's a deep shot to marvin mims that mims isn't able to quite haul in and a defender makes a great play or it's a fumble by javante williams or it's a missed block here or it's a missed throw here um there were chances, and I think that that is encouraging. Now, obviously, I think this team um, defensively, and we'll talk about this, needs to find a way to um, get back to where they were. And obviously, that's difficult when you lose your best player in Pat Sertan at the beginning of the game. Um, but obviously, 8 of 10 on third down in the first half, allowing the Chargers to score in all four possessions. That's not, unfortunately, a, a winning formula. And as Sean Payton said, there's a lot of areas to get better but i do think when i went back and watched it there were chances there were plays to be made that we've seen the broncos make at times this season unfortunately yesterday against the chargers they did not make those plays whether it was on offense whether it's on defense on these third and longs that the chargers were able to convert and that's just going to happen sometimes i think bigger picture people just need to and by people i mean fans twitter maybe more <laughs> specifically is like Everyone just needs to take a deep breath. And yes, it was a frustrating loss in a lot of ways. The Broncos had a big opportunity in front of them to get to four and two. Um, they did things that they could not do, as Sean Payton said, in order to win this football game. They turned it over twice in the first half. Yeah. Uh, time of possession, the Chargers dominated. They There was a late rally, but it wasn't enough, as you said. But at the same time, this team is still three and three. They were yeah. just on a three-game winning streak. Um, you know, Bonex, I think obviously people want to see immediate success, want him to be perfect immediate, yeah. uh, immediately. I get that. And they've seen it. I mean, the last three weeks, they saw that success that he was able to have and those late rallies and those gritty wins. Like, they're all ingredients for a recipe to success as well. Yeah. But but I also think, like, this is going to take time. And, yeah. and people have said that. All along, right? Greg Penner said at the beginning of the season, there's going to be ups and downs. We got to ride with him through it. The, the general uh, consensus was with a rookie quarterback, there's going to be ups and downs. Well, this is one of the downs, and we'll see, you know, can the Broncos bounce right back? But but big picture, this team is 3-3, three and three, still right in the mix. Um, they had an off day defensively. Offensively, uh, didn't look great in the first half. But again, missed opportunities were more the reason for that, I think, than just a total ineptitude. And so let's everybody just take a deep breath, realize that this team is three and three. At this point a year ago, the Broncos were one and five. <laughs> and now with a rookie quarterback, they're three and three, still right in the mix, have a chance to go to New Orleans, get a win, and be right back where you need to be. And so I just I don't understand the panic necessarily. I can understand mm -hmm. being frustrated. I can understand wanting a win. I can yeah. understand people saying, Oh, maybe you let one get away. This is a big opportunity. The Chargers are a good football team they've always had talent now they're well coached with Jim Harbaugh number one scoring defense going into this game I know it's early in the season but it's very important to really highlight that and rookie quarterbacks in the history of the NFL have not fared well against top rank the top ranked defense right and, and Sean Payton said listen all around Bo we need to paint a perfect picture um, yesterday the Broncos did not paint a perfect picture with 
a fumble in the run game with giving up, like I said, defensively, uh, eight of 10 third downs. Chargers started 11 of 15 on third down, gave up scores on five of the first six possessions. I mean, that's not painting the perfect picture around Bo, but all that said, the Chargers are a good football team. They're going to be in the wild card mix. And I think it's just a part of this year is like, it's a process that you, know, you just beat the Raiders by 16 points and really were dominant in that win. You just went on the road and beat a Jets team with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they, you went on, you went to Tampa, yeah. who just scored 50 against New Orleans and beat them handedly. And, and yeah. so there are signs here. It's not going to be, it's not a team that's going to go undefeated. There's going to be bumps along the way. But I think let's take a more. 10,000, 30,000 foot view here of saying, okay, the team is three and three through six weeks. There's clearly been a step forward since last year. There is a grit, a resolve in this team in terms of how they were able to battle back yesterday. And let's just, let's realize that, again, there's going to be some bumps, but so far this year, I think it's been a better than a lot of people, especially externally expected. And mm-hmm. so um, let's, let's have a little patience here. I think I saw a note again, 10 and seven over Sean Payton's last 17 games. Broncos haven't had a stretch like that since they were uh, in the playoffs <laughs> winning the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. I mean, this is this is a team that is making strides. It may not be linear, but let's just recognize that that everything is okay. The sky's not falling. It's a loss. It's not going to define the season. Um, and and I know we've got a lot to get to, but I, I feel like that needed to be said because yeah. Twitter this morning. It's like the Broncos are 0 six instead of three and three, and I just don't <laughs> oh, fully. Oh, it's a. I don't like fully get it. Maybe I maybe I'm dumb, I, but like I I don't fully get it. And so, you know, if if the Broncos go right back and win this week, now you're looking at oh they've won four of their last five, everything's fine again. Like let's yeah. let's put them in the playoffs. Like this is a you know, <laughs> it needs to be less of a roller coaster, I think, and under and people need to understand there's going to be some ups, there's going to be some downs, um, and just. Just kind of chill out a little. <laughs> Usa. Usa. Exactly. Is basically what you're saying. I mean, Garrett Bowles, after the game, he said, he said it with like a little smirk on his face. He was like, we're going to see them again. Like, we're like, this is a divisional game. We're going to play them again. And what we did in this game, we can learn from. And these are just the lessons that are part of this series. He gave a lot of credit to the rookies and the guys that really kind of stepped in and, and had those plays. You mentioned that on the instant analysis after the game about how you saw a lot of, from these rookies kind of come up and, and make these plays, you know, Troy Franklin, Devon Bailey, kind of those guys. Um, I believe you spoke to Audric Esme after the game too, which is about how they can add to this team because this is a young team. And Garrett Bowles said that, after the game, he said, you know, being one of the older guys, like being around these young guys gives me motivation and fuels me to not only want to, you know, bring them under my wing, but to also like learn from their positivity and their resiliency as well, because he called this team resilient. He was like, we're resilient. He's like, we have a fight in us that you can't, it's either in you or it isn't. And I think that was a really big thing because the Broncos were down 20 to nothing going in uh, to halftime. And for them to battle back and really kind of shift Corlin Sutton said after the game, we could have just laid down and been like, hey, they got us today, but they didn't. And you go down, you kind of score. You mentioned that Bo Nix made a couple of good plays on his feet. So my question to you is, what do you see from all the rookies, including Bo, of the way that their resiliency really kind of helps spark something in the second half? Obviously, the rally came up short, but you do take, you have to take some positivities from that. Yeah, I think this is where I go back to what Sean Payton, George Payton, Greg Penner said back in March at the owners' meetings, which is, We want to be competitive now, but we are also building for the future and have an eye on having success in the future, right? And so, you know, the Broncos, it's been well discussed. I think the over-under was five and a half coming into the year uh, for the whole season. They've got three, three and three right now. So there is this, um, so that alone, you're looking at like the Broncos are on their way to overperforming expectations and not necessarily internally, because I know internally you always expect to compete. But externally, the Broncos are in a place where they're already maybe a step ahead of where people expected them to be with Bo Nix. A lot of that obviously has to do with how well the defense has been playing, and um, certainly they want to get back to that standard. But then there's also this element of preparing for the future. And um, I've seen so many people be like, this year is all about, like, what do we have for next year? And I I kind of agree. I kind of don't like it's also about this year and like, can you make the playoffs and it's too difficult a league careers are too short to not 
want to go out there and, and win now. I think Alex Singleton said it at some point during training camp, like, hey, I'm 30, I'm almost 30, like, I want to win now, I don't want to wait. Um, so, First of all, 30 is not old. Agreed, agreed. But, you know, in football world, a little different like, than, yeah, it's a little uh, different than in the football world. We can podcast a little later in life than uh, people can play football, but... But so I don't I don't want to like just suggest that this year like this year matters a lot and they're yeah. they're still pushing and and um, again very early in the season we hope they can make a run if they get the next couple of games I like the way that things set up for them mm-hmm. but there is this element too of building for the future and so to your question about the rookies Devon Vele Troy Franklin Audric Estime uh, they showed up especially Franklin and Vele in a big way mm-hmm. at the end of the game on Sunday uh, Vele has a catch on a, a fourth down that he runs for 37 yards. It's actually a great play by Bo uh, to kind of fake like he's going to run and then just loft it. It was like a little floater in basketball. Um, Vele's run after the catch ability, I think, has been on display. Troy Franklin made a couple of catches, including his first career touchdown. Um, So you're seeing what you have in those guys. And and for the rest of this year and the future, you're going to need those guys, right? Because Troy Franklin clearly has this level of speed that makes him unique, makes him a challenge to defenses. They haven't connected on the deep ball yet, but like even the one against the Raiders, you just see how open he is. He's open by (laughs) by 15 yards. And so that one's going to haunt you forever. (laughs) No, it'll it'll be okay eventually. Um, (laughs) But like that speed is different. And Vele, the ability to get open, which we saw all during training camp, I think you're seeing it now again. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are things that this team can rely on moving forward. And so it is, Again, I go back to March. It's about right now and winning right now. These yeah. guys can help you. But then it's also as you look ahead to, you know, what is this going to look like in week 15 or what is this going to look like next year? Like these are guys that you can picture being part of that. And so um, I'm excited to see him get more run. And with Estime, uh, literally get more runs, yeah. as, uh, <laughs> as Sean Payton said. Difficult to when you've got guys like Javante and Jaleel to get that third back more carries. But it sounds like something that they want to try to do mm-hmm. as well. And um, the way they're playing – yeah, give these guys uh, some opportunity to see what they can do with them. Yeah, no, it's a short week for the Broncos. They're going to head on the road in just a little bit to, for that Thursday night football game against New Orleans. After the game, we really kind of talked to the guys about how do you kind of flush this one out. And I asked a lot of the guys, like, is this the best week to have a short week? Because you just came off a tough loss, and is this the best time to kind of get that taste out of your mouth? The overwhelming answer was yes, because they just said, like, you don't want to sit with this, like, misery for a week and you do want to get a chance to really get that w especially when you know what you have to fix and nick bonito in particular said that they just had to start fast and it was something they haven't really done in the past weeks where they started so slow and they kind of give up a lot of on the run and you know jk dobbins had a day and you know obviously justin herbert was able to do some things and they gave credit to that but they also said like that was on us it was very self-inflicting wounds that this defense Uh, acknowledged after the game so I think when you're going into this New Orleans game from your perspective what you've kind of seen from this team how do you see them kind of fleshing it out to really prepare on such a quick turnaround yeah I mean well the one time they faced some adversity this year has been week three going to Tampa you know your own two got a two-game road trip coming up and uh, Broncos responded with probably one of their best games of the season, right? And especially offensively in the first half. Um, I liked how they responded. The defense was really up to the challenge. Now, we don't we don't know as we're recording this what Pat Sertan's availability is yeah. going to be. Sean Payton has said he's in the league's concussion protocol. Um, given the Broncos travel on Wednesday, play Thursday, you'd think it would be difficult, but we don't want to say one way or another, like, right. here's what's going to happen. Um, so, But if they don't have Pat, mm-hmm. right, this team is going to have to figure out how do we deal with the Saints – offense that uh, scored 27 points in a quarter. And I know that's the only points they scored, but it it was uh, an explosive effort. Uh, Spencer Rattler looked, um, you know, showed flashes, I think, which is what you can expect from a guy whose, whose arm talent is that uh, evident. Um, But I, I just think in general, this team has shown an ability to respond. I thought in the second half, the defense was better. Yeah. Um, he gave up one field goal, but that was it. And, and granted, the Chargers weren't pushing it necessarily, but still came up with big stops when they needed to. So that was important. Um, you know, I, I'm more interested in seeing, like, offensively, how does this team respond? How do mm-hmm. they maybe try to carry over some of the momentum? Um, it feels like a game where maybe you have a, the Saints just gave up 51, right? So they're going to be, yeah. they're going to want to respond too. And Drew yeah. Brees is uh, being honored. Like we'll get to all that goes into that in a second, but uh, they're going to be ready to go too. I think yeah. 
they, offensive. They want that bad taste out of their mouth as well after right. falling to the bugs. Right. And it, I think it's always better to play Thursday after a loss because you're just ready to go as opposed <laughs> to a win. Yeah. Um, but I think offensively, one of the things Sean Payton said Monday was when you go into a short week, you have to do what people know by heart. And it's plays that you ran a bunch during training camp. It's... Um, you know, things that guys are really comfortable with. It's You might add a wrinkle here or there, but you're not just – you're limiting to some degree. And I, I don't want that to sound like I'm saying limiting in a bad way, but you're, you're yeah. really honing in on what do you do well, what do you guys know really well, and when you know it well, you can play fast and find success. And I think we've seen Bo Nix play some of his best football in the two-minute drill when they're playing hurry up. Um, and I think it was uh, – Kurt Warner a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. um, who was talking about it and Peyton Manning, Eli Manning talked about it as well in the two minute. That's when you see quarterbacks, especially in new systems play well because it's things that they know by heart. And so, you know, is it Kirk cousins in Atlanta finding success late in the game? Um, I think some of the reason you see Bo thrive in those situations is he can use his legs, but it's also things that he knows really well. It's the throws that he feels comfortable with and if the Broncos need to lean on some of that going into New Orleans uh, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. that can be a recipe for success and say hey Bo here are the I don't know the numbers at 10 15 whatever like <laughs> yeah. here are the things you do really well mm-hmm. let's focus in on those and uh, maybe find some success because clearly the the ability is there mm-hmm. right and the potential is there you just got to find a way to do it more um, consistently maybe this is a way to do that yeah that is one way to kind of look at things and also, Quinn Miners, after the game, said, he said, I'm going to keep saying it. I feel like our wins and losses really depends on how how good our offensive line plays. And he puts a lot of pressure and a lot of uh, credit to his offensive line and the way they've been able to do things. He's like, you know, we, did, we didn't do so good in the first half. We, we were able to kind of get things going in the second half. But to have, you know, your leaders really step up in that moment, especially when, you know, you have these big injuries coming down. First was Alex Singleton, like you said, and then Pastor Tan goes down. Uh, a lot of the guys were just saying, like, you have to, it, it obviously hurts, but you have to have, like, that next man up mentality as you kind of go on because it is part of the game, and these these moments can happen at any point. I mean, you look at last week, Pat had that big pick six, and now this week he was out. So, obviously, anything can change um, really quickly, but... P.J. Locke said it. You just have to try to not let it affect you. And Levi Wallace said, I don't know what's going to happen either, but because of the mentality that we've really infused into our defense and to our team, we just have to be ready whether our number is called or not to go ahead and make those plays. So when you kind of look at the way that this team continues to rally, continues to you know pick each other up, I feel like that, that's starting to create part of that identity of just like this gritty you know, team that's going to go after whether they win or lose, especially on a short week, like you said, when the implications of this Saints game can be big, given that, you know, going back to New Orleans, um, Drew Brees being honored, it is a big game for the Saints, and I feel like the Broncos want to play spoiler to that a little bit. Yeah. Listen, there's no doubt the Broncos are being tested a little bit more with injuries than they were a year ago. They led the league in fewest games missed due to injury uh, in 2023, and already they've, I believe, surpassed that number. Um, and you're dealing with, you know, uh, I think Matt Parrott filled in admirably, but like he's the third, he was the third option yeah. there, right tackle, right? And yeah. um, Alex Forsyth is your backup center, and uh, Josh Reynolds is out for four games, and Alex Singleton is out for the year, and Pat Sertan is down, and, yeah. um, you know, I'm sure I'm missing Baron Browning has been on IR. Like there are some guys that you've been missing, and uh, obviously as we were recording this, we don't know yet what the injury report mm-hmm. looks like for Thursday. It's possible the Broncos are going to have to go without some other guys. I mean, who knows what pops right. up on an injury report after a game, right? Like at this time last week, we wouldn't have thought that Josh Reynolds was not going to play uh, against the Chargers. So there there has been that need to like show a little bit of resilience from an injury standpoint that the Broncos weren't challenged by a year ago. And listen, I think coming into the year, one of the things that I was, I don't want to say worried about, but just – you expect the injuries to like come a little bit back to the mean. So it's yeah. not necessarily surprising. And um, the Broncos will get some of these guys back, but how do they weather this storm and, and how good is the depth and how do they, you know, when you're adjusting, it kind of reminds me of um, last year against new England, Cortland Sutton goes out on the first series of the game with a concussion. Uh, and the Broncos offense struggled for most of the game because Cortland had been the guy, right? That they, yeah. they went to Cortland. He was the guy. That's who their offense ran through. And in-game, it was hard to adjust 
without Cortland. And then the next week against the Chargers, when they had a full week, they found a little bit more success, right? And so for Vance Joseph, now that you, it's not a full week, but now that you've got a couple days to say, okay, here's what we did in the second half without Pat. Um, obviously, Chris Olave is also in concussion protocol, yeah. so it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, does that almost offset if neither guy yeah. can go? Derek Carr as well is out. I believe they're still going to play with their backup, I think. Yeah, Spencer Rattler, I think, is still going to start there mm-hmm. at quarterback. Um, but, like, does a couple days give Vance Joseph a chance to say, okay, here's our plan now without Pat if they have to go without him? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, they're, they're certainly being tested by injuries right now. you got to find a way to hold on and, then, <laughs> and find ways to win anyway because – You'll get some of these guys back, and you can't let this stretch of the season kind of define your year uh, because some guys are missing. Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting because on Thursday uh, after practice, Vance Joseph said, you know, this team, you know, has been dealing with adversity. He specifically talked about that first in that first quarter or so versus the Raiders, but he was referring to that. And then he said, we haven't had that in a little bit until that game, but it's going to come back. And it was really foreshadowing that he said that given what happened in this game, but he said that because it's like we've faced this and we've gotten out of it and just just the way that the season goes you're gonna face adversity again it's gonna happen it's just part of the season and so I think he was really kind of emphasizing the way that they know what they need to do to overcome this adversity now going into the Thursday night game again short rest um short week I think the guys are really looking forward to it though given uh just get another chance to really kind of get out there you mentioned that Bo said that he was ready to go practice yeah he's ready (laughs) to go put the pads back on (laughs) He was ready. Uh, So you go into this week. Obviously, Sean Payne is returning to New Orleans. We'll get into more of that matchup on the next podcast. But just I know he spoke about that on Monday about just his return back to New Orleans. Yeah. And I think he handled it the right way, which is to acknowledge that there are emotions. Right. He Mm -hmm. said um, it's going to be unique going back. It's a little bit different for a coach than a player going back to um an old team, but certainly he spent a long time there, 15 years. He won a Super Bowl there. They went to the <laughs> yeah. playoffs a bunch of times. Um, he mentioned he's texted Drew Brees and uh, congratulated him, said it's the first of many honors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this we got some construction noise going on. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe they're ready to practice. Um, but I, I think the point that Sean made was – it's about more than me, right? And more than anything, he hates to lose. He wants to go mm-hmm. down there and get a win. And it's about yeah. this team playing its best football on a short week and finding a way to win. And I think that's the right mindset, right? Of, yeah, it might be emotional. And there, it is going to be, um, you know, he mentioned his family and his, his kids and his wife, like, yeah. all being there. But it's also about going and getting the win because going back to New Orleans, I'm sure for him, is infinitely better if you do that and you get a win as opposed to <laughs> going back there and like reliving, like, what is this like? And then yeah. you're not able to, to get a win. Like, right. it's just, there's no question which one is better. Yeah. Right. He's um, a competitor. You're right. He hates to lose. And so like, and he did acknowledge, I don't expect, I think he said, I don't expect a lot of flowers or warm fuzzies is how he <laughs> um, uh, phrased it. Yeah. I, I like that warm fuzzies. Uh, I, I will be interested to see what the, reaction will be i think um you know obviously uh did a lot for the city and and helped them win a world championship Mm -hmm. um so it wouldn't surprise me if there's a tribute video we'll have to see exactly what that's like but Mm -hmm. it will be emotional drew Brees is going into their hall of fame i believe and then it sounds like there's a separate ring of fame it's a little they got a lot of stuff going on so (laughs) i'm confused exactly what's happening with drew Brees, but he's going to be honored in some way Mm -hmm. um and it'll be an emotional night it's a prime time game um yeah a lot of, and it's not just Sean Payton, right? Like a lot of guys on this team, a lot of coaches on this coaching staff mm-hmm. has spent, have spent time in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a reunion game for a lot of people, but it almost comes at a, I don't want to say like it's a, a good that you're coming off a loss, but like the focus on a short week coming off a loss is going to be really high and yeah. you're not going to, um, there's motivation there too. There's motivation. Yeah. You're not going to be caught like, oh, we're riding high. Or like, if the Broncos had won, I wonder if there's a little bit of like, is there danger of we're feeling real good and we're going down there and and then you, uh, not you overlook it, but like you almost like you know, yeah, there's it, just like a letdown yeah. there. And now I feel like the guys are going to be really dialed in. Not th- not th- again, not that they wouldn't be, but like there's an extra level now mm-hmm. of motivation to get this win. Um, 
and uh, but it, but it is just always we'll talk more about this there's just like something about these games sometimes that you can't quite predict what's going to happen and we've seen it mostly with players right like Manning goes back to Indianapolis in 2013 I believe um and it's like this emotional game. They show the tribute video right yeah. before kickoff. He's waving to everybody in the crowd. It's clearly emotional. A Colts team that should not have beat that Broncos team ends up with a win. Um, we saw it when Tom Brady went back to New England with Tampa. That New England team was not very good, and they hung around. I, th- I think the Bucks ended up winning, but uh, New England like really <laughs> hung in that game and like made it as difficult yeah. as possible. So there is that added emotion, and you never know how it's going to quite play out. But uh, it'll it'll be a fun one, but... Again, more fun if the Broncos can win because they really need it. Yeah. And I feel like there's something about these primetime games that just kind of adds that extra layer of just, like, focus. And uh, when I've talked to a couple of guys just in general in the league, like, they always say, like, something about primetime games, like, everyone's watching because you're the only game that's on. (laughs) You know, whether it's Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night, like, all eyes are on you. And so there is that extra level of excitement and just motivation and wanting to put your best out there because everyone is watching again because you are the only game that's on. So I feel like when you have that kind of, you know, mindset and you're kind of going into this, um, I think Cortland Sion had one of the best messages after the game yesterday by just saying, like, you know, the rally that we made and this team has no quit in it. And even if you want us to, we do, we just were incapable of quitting. Like, we are always going to continue to battle back. And one of my favorite quotes that he said from yesterday was just, you know, we were we fell short, but that was due to our sins in the first half. And I thought that was very telling of just how being one of the leaders of this team and kind of really being a, a guy that a lot of the young rookies are looking up to, for him to have that mentality and kind of be like, look, like, we have this. You know, we we know what we did wrong. We can fix it. And there are certain things that we just have to start getting that spark early. And I think that's one thing that the fo- the is the focal point for the defense as well, is just making sure that they start out with a lot more urgency. Um, But I think you made a point that just trying not to do too much at the same time. It's a very thin line between both, right? Yeah. Well, and, and listen, this, this team, I've been impressed with how they've battled. I've been impressed with how they've fought, but I do think you can say that at the same time, um, just where this team is still building, you can't afford, especially against good teams Mm -hmm. like the chargers. Like maybe you can get away with it if you're playing, um, a not so great team, but when you're playing a team like the Chargers, that's going to be in the playoff hunt. Yeah, that is potentially a wild card team, uh, maybe even competes for the division title. Who knows? You can't afford to do things like lose the turnover battle yeah. two to nothing. You can't afford to do things, um, you know, like allow an eighty percent third down conversion rate and not get off the field. Yeah, three you can't, for eleven versus the Chargers on Sunday on third down for the offense. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't um, do things like. Uh, not score in the first half or the first three quarters. Like you, you can't keep falling into every every game at home now this season. The Broncos have been in a double digit deficit. Yeah, and so like some teams can climb out of those consistently. Like the Chiefs, for example, um, and maybe not even this year, but like a couple years ago, they had the firepower where down ten nothing. It was like they were still kind of right within striking distance. <laughs> I think the Broncos have to play more. Um, like, I don't know if that margin for error exists, right? Like there's a formula for them to win and it's winning the turnover battle. It's, um, you know, playing good defense. It's getting a lead so that like, think of Tampa. The reason that went so well is that you built a lead and then the Bucks had to kind of change how they were playing and then boom, you take control of the game. Yeah. They had to adjust to you versus them adjusting to the opposite team. Right. And, and again, I'm encouraged by what I saw uh, from Bo Nix in the fourth, even though some people think it doesn't matter. It matters, I th- people. I think it matters. It matters. Um, but at the same time, like, there's a formula for this team to win, and Sean Payton has mentioned it before, that some teams, there are some games where you can turn the ball over two or three times and lose the turnover battle uh, or come back from a deficit and win, but, like, you're living dangerously yeah. to play that way, right? And yeah. so as the Broncos move forward, I think it's got to be back to win the turnover battle, um, play good defense, get off to a better start, find a way, you know, even if it's 3-0 Broncos at the end of the first quarter, like at least you're not in that hole, Mm -hmm. right? And and too often, especially at home, they've been in that hole and it's put them in a tough spot. So um, this team has a a way right now as they're building. And again, it it may not be the way they always need to win. But right now it feels like there's a way the Broncos need to win and um, they've got to get back to that. Because when they do it, like against the Jets, 
the Raiders. I, I know they went into that hole, but then they they kind of got back to their like once they got back to ten ten, they got this back is a new to game. The, they, right, <laughs> they got back to that um, yeah. way of playing. But that's how you have to play football, I think, right now. And so I'm interested to see can they get back to that on Thursday night against the Saints and uh, get this thing back on track. Yeah, it's the perfect time to reset, like you said. So. You know, the Broncos are going to head on the road for that Thursday night football game against New Orleans. And it's a short week, but I think the guys are ready for it, given just how they were talking after after the game. And they are ready to get this taste out of their mouth. So we appreciate you guys for listening and watching to another episode of Altitude Advantage. I am your host and team reporter, Elisa Hernandez. Across from me is our encyclopedia, our stats guy, and our lead writer for DenverBroncos.com, Eric Dalala. So make sure you guys subscribe, leave your comments below, and we will come back with you with another episode.